of the Bonner District. Uh, so we welcome them here today, not only to speak on Anzac Day, but to march with us. I now call upon the head, head girl and head boy of Buller High School, Jessica Roach and Aidan Hackett, to come forward, please. Mo Mahara. Greetings to all who have gathered here on this day of remembrance. Today, the 25th of April, is the day we remember and honour those who serve and have served for our country. As with other families in New Zealand, it is an unwritten, unset expectation that we attend the Anzac Day service and remember the many family members who have fought for our country. For my family, it is a time when stories come out and names are mentioned from generations before me. When I was younger, the stories were about great granddad, Corporal Charles Brunning of the 4th Reserve Transport Company visiting the pyramids in Egypt, or about great great uncle Jack Brunning, driver, 4th Reserve Transport Company, second expedition, who shot down a plane with his ground mounted ring gun in Greece, and about great great uncle Alan Brunning, senior gunner of the Home Guard, who shot the top off the steeples with the gun at the Carters Beach tippy. Now I am older, the stories are told about Uncle Jack sneaking into the officer's mess with an Australian nurse and getting plied with whiskey from General George Patton. How he was a prisoner of war. How he carted cases of food and supplies to Jewish concentration camps. How he never talked of what he saw. How great 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 Uncle John Barrowman, 29th reinforcements, 2nd and 3rd rifle brigades, was killed in action on the Western Front on the 9th of September 1918, two months before the war ended. His name is carved on the gates of remembrance behind me. To me, it is important that we remember the enormity of what we sometimes ask our servicemen and women to do and endure for the service of our nation. I hope future generations will continue to engage our community war stories and memorials. I hope that as in my family, Chapters of family history will be passed on to the next generation and that we never forget the sacrifices our forebears made. I am a New Zealander, free to speak without fear, free to worship in my own way, free to choose who to govern my country, free to oppose what is wrong, free to stand for what I think is right. For this, I can thank my ancestors, your ancestors, and you, the service men and women who stand before me today. Kamo Mahara Tono Tato Ki Arato. We will remember them. Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, ANZAC. This is the acronym that has been a part of Australian and New Zealand culture since 1915. It is unknown who or when the acronym was first created, though, before the ANZACs landed on, Gallip on the Gallipoli Peninsula, now known as ANZAC Cove. Australian and New Zealand soldiers were proposed the name of the Australasian Corps. However, they did not want to lose their identity, so the acronym ANZAC was created. They wanted to stay individual, however, when put to the task of working side by side, they could. To the rest of the world, Australian and New, Zealand's New Zealanders are known to be quite similar, with only a slightly different accent, the temperature, and how New Zealand doesn't have any snakes. However, you and I know they're different. Being born and brought up in Australia and then moving to New Zealand, I know the difference. Firstly, those rubber things that everyone wears on their feet, thongs, called jandals over here. The boxes that are used to keep food and drinks cold, eskies, called chilli bins. The list could go on. Although there is one thing that brings Australian and New Zealanders together, no matter where, no matter what, their camaraderie. Being able to rely on each other in any and every situation and knowing there is at least someone who's got your back. This is one thing that has stayed constant since the 25th of April 1915 and has been and will be for all the years to come. This is the Anzac spirit, where the Anzacs are recognised for joining the two nations together in a brother-in-arms relationship for their bravery, endurance and mateship. To think, 106 years ago, over 16,000 fellow Australian and New Zealand servicemen landed on the shores. Boys, teenagers and men, all over the two countries, with different backgrounds, different cultures, coming together for a single cause. 
to all the youth out there in today's society, ranging from my age to 14. Think what you've been doing in the last week. Wherever a century ago, they were representing the nation, our nation, fighting a war. Think what you've been doing at three o'clock this morning, where they would have been preparing to land on the seashore. Think what you're doing to help your family, community and nation compared to what they did at your age. The least we could do as a community is to acknowledge them for what they did, shaping society for what it is today. As the people of Australia and New Zealand, we will remember them for this day and all days to come. At least we forget.